drop them in. Just happy little bushes. Happy little bushes. There. Well, well with the completion of this painting, this will end the, the, the eighth, eighth joy of painting series. series. It's okay. hard for me to believe it. We have, have over so does this mean I'm live? Let's see. Hundred shows. shows. Mm -hmm. Take a little blue here. Put a little highlight on these trees. You have finally really got it right, right shows. here on OBS. If there's any, any of them that you've missed, missed and you'd, you'd like, like to see them, give your station, station call. call. Let them know. Let them know. Oh, yeah, we're finally live. And we need some help. Give them a hand. I can't see my live chat, so I'll have to put my phone there. Just so I can see it. But it looks like we're live. Okay. Just mm -hmm. there. Don't, Don't kill, kill all the dark, dark contracts. contracts. That's, That's what, what makes it pretty. pretty. And, and you, know you know me. me. Yo, what up? I have a little cabin, cabin in here. So, so maybe, maybe with, with all this... this... Let me know if you could hear me. Can you hear the audio? From OBS? Echoing? Fuck, it's echoing. I'm never going to figure out OBS. Hold on. Let me try these headphones. Where are my headphones? Headphones, headphones. Where are my headphones? There they are. I've been trying to mess with OBS all week, dude. I just cannot get this shit. How's the audio? Is the audio better now? Let me know. And your audio is low compared to your video. Mike Ox. There is no echo? All right. How about now? This paint I have on here, I'm going to scrape out just Can you guys basic hear to get rid of that loose paint. It's also a good way to lay out your... Can you guys hear the, the video and shape. me at the same Start time? A little bit of Van Dyke Brown. Is there any some dark sea discrepancy in the uh, audio? Pull it across. Need a little front on the okay. cabin. Okay. A little bit right along here. No. You know, okay, so the audio is good. I'd like to take just a minute and thank the people here at the television station. Yep. We have All right, cool. It's good. The crews in the country. Sick. So we got OBS to work. And they, they make some of these beautiful television All right, cool. shows. And you never see them. You may never Yeah, never no. Thank you. The audio is good. But if it wasn't for them, there wouldn't. There I'm wouldn't confused. So can you guys hear me? Is the audio good, good or is it bad? Just put some highlights. You guys are just fucking around now. Give me a little door. Boop. There's 10 people. Ten can we get more people Let's to answer the question about the audio through. besides Sideways and Jerry? Because they're just, just I don't know if they're some. trolling or what. And that gives us a Because they're saying, camera. yeah, no, it's yeah, no. Right down is the audio down. good? If the audio is good with the video and myself, put a one in the chat. Over here on the other side of the room. Yeah, the audio is good. Okay, cool. Um, Wherever you want it. Nah, this is Bob Ross. All right, cool. It's good. Sick. Just like that. All right, cool. We figured out OBS. And pay attention to your So, yeah, this is Bob Ross right here. Angles are very important. Very important. Bob Ross is uh, from way back in the there day. But Let's put all kinds of little snow things here. Okay, let's go back. My neighbor's here. Labrador Look came onto my property a few hours ago. Go right into my uh oh, let's see what happened with Rich. What happened, Rich? And let's pop. My neighbor's Labrador yeah, came onto my right property here. a few hours ago. Hold on, let me pause. Working layers. Bob Ross. Most. So we can see what's going on, Rich. What happened, Richard? Um. My neighbor's Labrador came onto my property a few hours ago and started a fight with my Irish wolfhound. The lab got its butt kicked, starting a fight on my land. Now my neighbor is mad. Oh, God, dude. Is that the same neighbor with the fence? With the fence problem, dude? <laughs> I'm sorry that's happening, man. That's fucking terrible, dude. That's fucking horrible. Well... That's probably because of the fence. I'm guessing the dog got on your property because of the fence. Because, oh boy, 
Just didn't fix the... Uh, he hasn't been fixing the fence like he's supposed to. That's not on you, dude. That, that That's on him, you know? Let's watch these dorks right here. Ooh. Look at this shit. Welcome to Bonehead Truckers. This is a place where we make fun of the dumb stuff we see out here on the road. So if you like this kind of side swipe the vehicle and then... We'll turn the volume off. Look at that, dude. Check that out, man. Whew. That's no fun. Look at all that damage, dude. That's LTL right there. Uh, LTL, dude, they're supposed to be like the, the chiefs of the road. That's horrible. Oh, man. Look at that. Oh, man, he's... Fuck. They're lucky to be alive. Let's listen and see what Homeboy's talking about. So I don't know if you guys seen this. This is in New York where a FedEx sideswiped a vehicle and then... Uh, with people in it, uh, and then went dangling off the side of the bridge. Typical FedEx stuff. I'm sorry, Fe if FedEx, if you're watching this, I'm sure you are because you guys have emailed me before. Uh, we're used to seeing FedEx on bonehead chuckers. This is nothing new. And I've seen them for years, especially in inc inclement weather. They're, they're always the first in a ditch and it may have something to do with the you know, doubles and triples, the, the, the weight of the load. This in this particular case, the weight of the load actually saved people. It was empty. It was an empty trailer. Both trailers were empty. Five people were injured, including an infant, but everybody survived, so that's a good thing. That's the reason why I want to do a video about this. The problem is, we see FedEx all the time, and that's a sad situation. Why is it a sad situation? Because you think that these guys would be the best at what they do. Why would they be the best at what they do? Because there's so many of them, and it is an important and a dangerous job. Doubles and triples are some of the most dangerous vehicles out there because That's you crazy. got the wiggle wagons. We call them the wiggle wagons out there. And there's a lot of companies that have doubles and triples, but it's always FedEx. You, you don't hardly ever see UPS out there in a ditch, okay? And that we've I've got a serious problem with this and it's not so much I'm picking on one company I'm picking on y'all the thing to fix this is training and I've been an advocate all my career even before YouTube existed that's nice, I dude. was an advocate of trainers okay yeah, trainers training, that, training, training you could train all you want dude but shit's just gonna happen oh well what can you do well since we're live right here on, uh, dude, I don't know why they keep recommending Kevin Samuels to me, but dude, why the hell do they keep recommending this shit? I don't know. Um, uh, check this out. So. Since we're live right here on YouTube, I think we could go down a rabbit hole today. So, I don't know. We could, like, look up serial killers. No, the next door neighbor. Um, oh, the next neighbor, but the lab came through the hole. Yeah. So, again, it's because of the um, homeboy still not fixing his thing. He's not fixing his side of the fence. Uh, fuck. That was like, what? How long was that? Like three days? And on the last day, I got sent home? What's up, buddy? How's the Bay Area? It's great. The weather's great. I was about to go out to San Francisco today, but I wanted to stay home to get down this OBS, right? And it looks like I finally got OBS down. I got to use Bluetooth headphones. I had to, like uninstall it then reinstall it and mess with the settings and i was about ready to take my laptop and just throw it out the window but yeah so today um i'm getting ready to get my own spot pretty soon to move out of pop's house so little by little i'm collecting furniture to do it 
So I went and got a bench press because I don't want to go to the gym. I want to be able to work out in my own room. And then I got a bed. I got the bench press, a bed frame, and a desk. Now all I need to do is to get a mattress, a computer chair for myself, and a dresser, some hangers. I mean, really, it's just like a mattress, dresser, and yeah, I think that's all that all that I need now. Then after that, I'll just I'll just find it. It shows that you watch. Dude, the last time I watched, like, any of those red pillars was, like, years ago. But they still pop up, dude. They definitely still pop up. Look at Pearl. They're recommending Pearl. The last time I watched Pearl is when Pearl was, like, up and popping, right? This is who I watch a lot. I watch a lot of The Fine Print. He's a van life YouTuber. Bob Ross, when I'm ready to go to sleep. Dude, Report of the Week. I haven't watched Report of the Week like in a few weeks, you know? Um, Kevin Samuels just comes up in the recommendations. I'm subscribed to Kevin Samuels, but Kevin just comes up all the time. All the time Kevin comes up, you know? Oh, well. Let, let's see what Pearl's talking about. So who, for those who don't know Pearl, this girl is a nut. Pretty much. And she talks about just like the dumbest, craziest shit. And ultimately her thing is she's just trying to find a man. And she's throwing a lot of people off because, I don't know, just because of the crazy shit that she says. Let's see. How much is rent there? So out here, a room is going for about a thousand bucks. If you get a master bedroom, it'll probably be the same about a thousand eleven twelve hundred bucks for like a really nice master bedroom that you could kind of turn into your own studio <coughs> that's what I'm going after a studio itself will probably be closer to like sixteen seventeen hundred a month after you, your utilities it'll probably be closer to like two grand for a one bedroom apartment to a studio. Out here in the Bay Area, people like to rent out rooms. Your room out here is pretty much your apartment, you know? So, yeah, I mean, the, the problem with that is a, a lot of people who rent out rooms in the Bay Area are old old people. Old people rent out rooms because they need help, you know? But, uh, yeah, look, we got nobody in the chat. I'm going to do a live stream later with my friend. I notice when I do these live streams early in the day, nobody's watching because everyone's at work. But then when I, uh, somebody took over Kevin Samuel's channel and we're going live on it. Who? Who's going live on Kevin's channel? Let's see. All right. Hello? What's going on? How are you? Live. Who's fucking around with the homeboy's channel? A year ago. The last live that they did was, was a year ago. Um, before he passed away. Rest in peace right. to Kev, dude. Hello? Rest in peace to old Kev, boy. Um, so, really, see, Steph is cold. What? Am I even subscribed to this? Hey, bro, you can, you can, I'm not even subscribed <laughs> you can laugh. Phone, you can think. No, no, Steph is cold. No. I am fine, bro. Um,. Uh, The fuck all this crazy shit this is who i watch a lot i watch a lot of duke the don because he goes after these red pill guys you will lose certain things okay now you can scream and cry against the matrix whatever That's you not want bad. but at the end of the day all I these guess platforms you're, are using yes including rumble are i guess you're paying platforms. for the weather so and location just because you're free in a country to say oh. whatever you want doesn't yeah, mean these I guess private so. institutions are legally bound for the to the go location ahead and, and to just be that. home. They have the right to respond with their own version of free speech. Dude, I can't see like my chat. The platform, right? There's supposed to be like the live one, chat you know, right here. I gotta pull up my phone to see the live sudden, chat, and it's kind you know, of delayed for me. You you're running out of options, right? Now you're becoming the Nick Fuentes. A part number two that's uh, playing towards his downfall right now was the incessant. Okay. Well, 
Check it out. If you guys are into Duke the Don, this guy right here, let me introduce you to Duke the Don. He is fucking hilarious. And he pretty much like goes after these red pillars. And he's just hella funny, dude. He's really entertaining to watch. I listen to him a lot when I'm at work. Like, I'll play his videos in the background when I'm driving and shit. Sneeko realized he's getting blackballed by Rumble. Okay, so I guess what's going on with a lot of these red pill YouTubers is they're getting, most of them are getting banned and demonetized and kicked off of YouTube. And now they're going to Rumble. But now Rumble is starting to get rid of these guys little by little because... Just a blank screen. They deleted the videos. It went live a few weeks ago. That's not bad, I guess. Keep it. Yeah. Who knows who's fucking with Kevin Samuels um, with his channel, dude. Who knows? There's really no, what you call it, to this live stream. It's just me finally figuring out OBS. For some reason, they're not showing me my live chat right here on OBS. So I still haven't figured this thing out all the way yet, you know? But I don't want to fuck around with it too much. Studio mode. The hell is that? Studio mode. Cut. Fade to black. I don't want to mess with it too much. Okay. Let's get it today stream run all my businesses it's because i need to have the stimulant in the capsule going up right now fuck this little twerp who cares dude did you guys see look oh yeah this is a girl that i watch too i watch a lot of nikki delventhal she's a van life youtuber you guys watch van life youtube i watch a lot of van life youtubers i think they're pretty cool but uh let's see um, this is also something that I watch a lot too. Skateboard fails, broken bones. Let's see. I want to see people get fucked. Oh. 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 ever skateboard growing up as kids i got five people in the live dude hold on now how many people are watching we got eight watching right now um at least everyone who's watching hit the like button because we only got about eight people watching the stream right now good you know what it's good that i don't got a lot of people watching that means you guys are outside and you're actually like living life unlike me in the house today I really should be outside. I'll go outside tomorrow. I'm going to go to the city tomorrow. And later today, I'm going to hopefully do a live stream with my homeboy. But for right now, we're chilling. No, but had a razor. Why don't these 
Einstein's wear wear pads. Who knows, dude? Who knows? <laughs> I never wore pads or helmets or anything when I was skateboarding. I was one of those dumb motherfuckers doing it like that. Get a beer, Rich. That sounds horrible, dude. Oh shit! Richard, you were outside working for four hours, and you, then you stopped a dog fight. <laughs> I hope the weather out there is good, at least, man. Go get a beer, dude. That sucks. <laughs> dude, those are big ass dogs too that you were breaking up. I hope you didn't get bit. Did you get bit, dude? Oh, I hope you didn't get bit. Oh, shit. Did he break something? Ooh! Ooh! Oh, he broke his ankle! Oh! Oh! <laughs> He's lucky he didn't break his arm, too. Would have hit his nuts. Oh, yeah! <laughs> I, hear, I hear you, brother. Look at it. That's terrible. That's terrible, bro. you're okay though Richard because that sucks uh, having to break up a dog fight like that man you might as well order a pizza and get a little I don't know get yourself a tall can or something chill out for the rest of the day you earned that man that sucks
don't know. What's uh Wendy Williams alcohol problem? You guys know Wendy Williams is like going through it right now, dude. She's all messed up. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us. Wendy Williams always said she wanted to come back to daytime television, but she has an even bigger challenge than anyone would have imagined. We're learning that the former talk show host has been diagnosed with a form of dementia. Stephen Fabian has details. Heartbreaking news. Wendy Williams is suffering from dementia and aphasia, the same disorder that has stricken actor Bruce Willis. In a press release issued today Bruce under Willis Wendy's name, her care team reveals after undergoing a battery of medical tests, Wendy was officially diagnosed with primary progressive aphasia and frontotemporal dementia. It says aphasia is impacting Wendy's language and communication abilities, and it calls her dementia a progressive disorder impacting behavior and cognitive functions. The news broke just moments before The View came to an end today. We wanted to uh, update you on some news that has just broke concerning Wendy Williams. Wendy and her care team just released a statement that she's been diagnosed with primary progressive aphasia and frontal temporal dementia. Yeah, poor girl. Our hearts go straight out to her. Wendy's care team said yeah, Wendy Williams, she's going through it, man. Let's see. Oh, okay, you're going to barbecue tonight? Yeah, dude, barbecue, brother. Throw on some good, like what? Shh. Throw on some oxtails or some shit. Or, or a good T-bone. You should do a segment for online dating. I've been on some crazy dates. <coughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to get my homie to come on um, the live tonight. I'm going to do another live stream later tonight. And I'm going to try to get my homie to come on. Augustine, now that you have more time, haven't you started cold approaching women? Yeah, of course. I've always cold approached women, no matter where I'm at, even when I was truck driving, right? But now that I'm back home, yeah, and especially when I finally move out and I get my own, like, my own room or my own, like, studio apartment or something. Oh, for sure, but for sure, dude, it's on and cracking. Because then I got someone to bring them. I got somewhere to bring them, you know? But yeah, oh yeah, dude, you always cold approach. Dude, if you see a hot chick out there, just go up there and talk to her, right? Don't be a creep. Just, you know, ask her how her day is. Um, give her a compliment and just go from there, man. Always cold approach women. As the diagnosis came after the legendary talk show host underwent a battery of tests here at Wild Cornell Medicine in New York City. That information was released as speculation mounted about her whereabouts. Now, right now, she's in an undisclosed yeah, she has dementia facility right now, dude. known she's only sick. to her court-appointed guardian. Even well, she her did it to herself. They have doing all that coke and doing all those drugs, dude. She did it to herself, but it's just sad to see it, man. Because we all, you know, we all would see her on TV. And now she's just sick. Online dating sucks balls. <laughs> <coughs> I'm still sick. I went out and got some sushi last night when I was about done with work. And I seen this black chick sitting alone. And, uh, man, I'm pretty sure I could have just went over there and sat down and started having lunch with her. Or dinner. It was around dinner time. Uh, online dating sucks balls. Cold approach is the only way. Well, yeah, honestly. The reason why online dating sucks is because a lot of the chicks that don't even notice you on Tinder or whatever, it's because if you go on their profile, if you like, if you were to be able to like ask a chick, be like, hey, show me your Tinder inbox or whatever, your matches or whatever, and they would just swipe. They would just swipe for like, they could just do it for like hours, all the dudes that are hitting them up. So for them, it's, just as hard for women on online dating apps to find dates and to, you know, get into a relationship from Tinder, just like it is for us guys. Like, we're not getting matches, and they're just overwhelmed. So the whole system is off, you know what I mean? And the way Tinder and these dating apps are designed, they're apps, they're designed to extract money from you and to get you to spend more money and spend as much time as you can on the app. If you actually start dating and you're not using the app anymore, well, they're not making any money, right? Let's see. Tinder 
dating is horrible woman's perspective. Let's see what these women have to say about Tinder. Dating apps are making women miserable. Let's see. Courtney Ryan, she's a hot Hi everyone, welcome too. back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Courtney Ryan, and today we're going to be reacting to an article about the fact that Tinder is making women miserable, apparently. So this is actually an older article that came out in shot? 2018, but I've seen it resurfacing a little bit more as of late and wanted to give my perspective on it as a woman since I've mainly been seeing men talk about it. So the article is titled, Why Tinder is Making Women Miserable, Men Swipe Right for an Ego Boost with No Intention of Speaking to matches. Sounds a little bit familiar. Sounds like something women do too. But anyway, just right off the bat here, I would assume this is because women tend to be a little bit more picky on dating apps than men are and are more selective than in the profiles that they actually do swipe right on. So the small percentage of male profiles that women actually swipe right on are most likely the men who have the most options, while the majority of men on dating apps hardly get any traction. What so I wouldn't say it's necessarily Dude. the majority of men who are swiping right for any ego boost. I think most men are swiping right hoping to get a match for the first time in a week or a month. Um, it's the men who have the most matches and more options who are doing that. So then this is creating a new issue for women because they're matching with these top tier men with all of the options on dating apps like me, and then top creates tier. the illusion that. that this is automatically mm. the type of man that they're Look able that. to attract, leading women to believe top they tier, shouldn't baby. settle for anyone less than that. Look then when these men who they're swiping mm. right on ultimately don't respond to their messages, <laughs> only want a quick around. fling or a hookup uh, or something dude, casual, I got this bench press. Women feeling oh, a little dude, bit it's, it's, it's going to go down, dude. So I can see how that might make one miserable let's shut this chick up real quick um i just got a bench press today dude i'm gonna use the fuck out of this bench press right bench press um later on i'm gonna uh i'm gonna find some more dumbbells i'm just gonna try to put my home my, my own little home gym together right that way i don't gotta go to the gym look instead of going to the gym get yourself a home gym it's cheap get yourself cheap equipment most of the shit you can find for like a few bucks. I bought this thing for like 150 and I could do I could do bicep curls on it. I could do bench press, I could, you know, do regular curls. I think I could even do sit-ups on it and it's a bench, so I could all, all I could always do like rows with the dumbbells. You know, squats, you just get a weight and do squats and then you go you know, do your cardio, go jogging, dude. You don't need to go to a gym, right? I took your advice and grabbed a Corona, being that I don't drink blood anymore. There you go. Put the lemon in there, dude. Put the lemon in there, brother. Chill out. You're retired, old boy. You, you, you better grab yourself a Corona. You earned that shit. Putting up with all those fucking prisoners and shit all your life, man. I'm sure that shit's stressful. I'm sure that shit's... Ugh. I'm sure that shit's very stressful having to deal with all that, man. Horrible. Right. The same way getting no matches. All right. Courtney Ryan, she's cool, but sometimes she just talks way too much. Austin Dunham, I swiped right on every girl with Bumble. Crazy results. I don't know. This guy looks kind of sus, dude. Some of these, like, some of these dating, like, YouTube guys, some of these guys look sus. Like, I'm sure he is banging a lot of broads, but... He probably swings the other way, too. I mean, he just looks... This dude looks kind of sus. Like, he probably hangs out in the bathhouses with Jeffrey Dahmer and shit. I don't know. Why Gen Z and Millennials are no longer dating? Uh, the truth about women on dating apps. This is three minutes. We can hear this. this All right, right, Alex, you talk about the four types of girls on dating apps. What are the four types of girls? Oh, let's hear The four this types shit. of girls. Okay, that video I did two years ago. <laughs> I believe it was uh, explicitly DTF. So that means a girl who knows that she wants to fuck and she has no problem saying it. Then you got the implicitly DTF girl who is DTF, but she's not going to admit it. Like, if you're like, what are you looking for on here? She'll be like, oh, I don't know, just have some fun. Uh, she won't be direct about it. And with her, you can't be super direct. Then we have the relationship girl. This is the girl who just wants to date. She's not looking to have sex right away. And then you have the time waster, the infamous time waster. This is the girl who's just looking for validation and attention. She's not going to meet up with anyone no matter what. Huh. 
Huh. Interesting. Is it because she's a narcissist? Is that what that is? <laughs> Maybe she already has a fuck buddy. Maybe she is Maybe. just looking for Instagram followers. Maybe she's just uh. likes validation. Could be any number of reasons. So blatantly DTF, non-blatantly DTF, serious relationship, and then just the time waster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got to admit, pretty spot on from what I can tell. But do you guys agree with that? Do you guys think that that's spot on the, with the types of brides that are on dating apps? You think that's about it? What do they say? DTF. Uh, uh, everything besides DTF and time waster. I already forgot. Let's uh, let's see what what they're talking about. What what homeboy say? Uh, most women at one time are talking too much. Most women at what? Yeah, at one time or another are talking too much. Yeah, dude. That like girl Courtney Ryan, she's like, I get like that's what YouTube is all about, but Jesus Christ, you know. Oh, now the internet is a time work. waster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gotta admit, pretty spot on from what I, I can know, tell. What the hell? Ladies, mm -hmm. feedback. Uh oh, did my Bluetooth mess up? Hold on. One second, I gotta reconnect this. All right, I think we're back on. What do you I, got for Alex? I agree with all of that. Yeah. I'm I'm like the middle too. You're the so you're, DTF or you're like like I will never be straight up. I want to fuck you. I've never been that person. I'll be like very subtle if I like if I like you. Nikki Ben. So Bullshit. Bullshit. I call bullshit right there. Let's hear that lie one more time. I'll be like very subtle if uh, I like if I like you. Nikki Ben. So you're I'll implicitly, be DTF. Impl implicitly DTF. In that I'm yeah. I'm like the middle too. You're the so sort of DTF or you're like like I will never be straight up. I want to fuck you. I've never been that person. Oh yeah. I'll be like very subtle if uh, I like if I like you. Nikki Ben. So you're I'll the be uh, with the name like Nikki Ben. If that's her name, what they just said, I don't know. No, this girl is definitely, she's definitely been DTF before, dude. This is just all a bunch of bullshit, you know. <laughs> DTF. Impl implicitly DTF. In, per in but, but person, what? not at, at work. Obviously, I go to work, I'm going to fuck. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean hello, it's got to be a job. Um, <laughs> but what you are not is a time waster. I, I don't waste time. You don't no. need any I, I fucking, nobody I, get all time for I that. hate people that waste my time. Yes. I don't like it. Time Amber, is money, thoughts baby. on these four types of women? Well, I think you nailed it because Hinge actually just changed uh, something that you can put on your profile. It says um, there's like four or five options. Looking for long term, open to short term. Looking for short term, open to long term. Mm. Looking for long term, looking for short term. And like Who just what uh, app does this? Hinge. Hinge. So they're just like, look. That you can choose everything, yeah. and like that, I really appreciate. I Got think it. Hinge is the best because you can. I can tell if a guy has kids. <laughs> just kidding. I mean, I can try. He can Hinge? put it if he wants. But lately, I've been meeting a lot of married guys who don't reveal that till later uh -huh. in the game. But they can write that oh. on there. Yeah. A lot of cheaters on Hinge, huh? Right, yeah. Mm. But um, I think it's. Just, we'll find you, motherfuckers. <laughs> it's cool to just be like, hey, this is what I'm looking. Dude, I've never used Hinge, right? Only Tinder. That's the only one I know about is Tinder. Um, I don't know. It sounds like everyone's on Hinge now. Do any of you seven uh, lovely folks use Hinge? Or what? Let's see what else they're talking about. Jordan Peterson, stop using these bullshit dating apps. Uh, Jordan Peterson, he's another one, dude. He's like, uh, He cries all the time. I can't listen to Jordan Peterson. Why man get so few matches on dating apps? Let's hear it. Picture she can find, and she's ready to go. They start swiping and hope for the best. At the end of the day, when the woman checks her phone, her like counter is full. Practically every profile she likes is an instant match. Soon she's overwhelmed by the amount of matches and messages in her inbox. This is just for what I was man, saying. It's a different story. So far, he has only received a couple of likes and has zero matches. He becomes frustrated with the app and starts questioning his self-image. He puts so much effort into setting up a nice profile after all, why can't he get any matches? 
To answer that question, we need to understand the numbers behind dating apps. I made a simulation of a dating app with 1,000 dummies to try to understand why men get so few matches. Dating apps can paint a distorted picture of what the real dating world is like. Some studies indicate that dating apps can have a negative impact on self-esteem, with a stronger effect on men, and women often have to find strategies to deal with intrusive behavior from men in these apps. It's hard to understand exactly what's going on inside these apps because there's very little data available. However, we can make educated guesses based on the little information we have. I'll start with an ideal, unrealistic scenario, and we'll see how quickly things change when I start. Well, here's the first thing that I want to say about this. The numbers are already off, right? There's way more men on dating apps than there are women to begin with. So how they have this like even 500 on each side? No, dude. It, it's more of like... Uh, almost like a thousand to maybe like 500. I guarantee you there's double, if not triple, the amount of guys on a dating app versus the amount of women. Right? Because here's the thing. Most women, they don't need to use dating apps. Most women... You know, believe it or not, even in this like social media age, they still live in the real world. They get hit on. Oh, did I just lose my fucking. Hold on. Am I still connected? Start adding real life variables. All right, cool. I, I got to get new headphones, dude. I'm going to buy some today. So most women, they don't need to use dating apps because they get hit on at the grocery store when they leave their house. You know, their homegirls set them up with dates. Their dating is, you know, still way more active than the average guy's dating life. That's why there's so many men on dating apps because women, they still get it in real life, right? When it comes to us guys, now we're the ones that use dating apps way more than women because we don't have it like that in the real world like women do. That's why this whole ratio was already off in this video. They got 500 women and 500 men. Now, if you're going to do a real legit study, it needs to be like, I'd say probably 200 women to 500 men. That's more accurate, you know? That's why I say, dude, um, real life dating, is it's better, right? Um, if you see a chick that you like, just go up and talk to her, right? Stop. And an another reason why guys use dating apps, just because they're fucking, they're too scared to go up and talk to a woman, you know? Go to church and Applebee's, more girls there than you could uh, shake a stick at. Yeah, exactly, dude. Applebee's for show, dude. Everybody's made a broad at Applebee's. You know, if, if not Applebee's, it's TGI Friday's. Um, oh man, I fell in love with this chick that worked at TGI Fridays out there in LA. Um, but yeah, do church for sure. Yeah, again, go to church, right? I'm not religious, but honestly, if you want to find, especially like a freaky broad, go to church, homie. Some of the most hottest, freakiest trim is right there at church, you know? Um, so yeah, this study is already off. Let's see what the comments are talking about. After you drop $200 for dinner, yeah. Uh, that's an expensive dinner. But yeah, I mean, you could spend 200 bucks for dinner. I mean, dude, you guys are eating a lot of food, though. Um, what the F is this? We're, I, I finally got OBS down. So we're watching YouTube and we're reacting to YouTube. I'm trying to get my Aiden Ross on, you know. What's up, Hayward Native? Checking in. What's up, what's up? Uh, go to Food Max. Yeah, Food Max. Go to the grocery store. The grocery store is the best place to pick up on broads, dude. Definitely go to the grocery store, you know? And, and here's something else. Here's something else. Since I got somebody in this live stream, you guys want to pick up broads like, like that easy? Believe it or not, <laughs> this is going to sound fucked up, but get married, you know? <coughs> get married. You get married and you walk around with your wife, especially if your wife is like pretty hot, dude, you're going to have women just already interested in you because you're not just dating, you're fucking married. Women love married men, believe it or not, you know? So, uh, 
Walmart, yeah, Walmart, everywhere, Target, you know? But let's hear what they're talking about right here. This is talking about, because we got some people that just entered the chat. Um, they're talking about why men get so few matches on dating apps like Tinder. So let's see. Side note, we're talking about dating with opposite genders. Same gender dating in dating apps has very different dynamics and it's out of scope for this video. Since we're trying to make an ideal scenario, let's assume we have the same amount of men and women using the app. Let's also assume that everyone off, sees 100 profiles per day and that every profile is treated equally by the algorithm. I'm going to assume that users like one out of four profiles they see. This means every user has a probability of 25% of being liked every time their profile is shown. Some of these parameters aren't realistic, but that's okay. We're gonna start like this and make it more realistic as we go. So, how many likes and matches will everyone get at the end of the day? Let's run the simulation. You guys wanna pick up chicks too? Get some muscles. <laughs> I'm just fucking around. Okay, not too bad. On average, both women and men get 25 likes and six matches per day. So, no, no, why does no, this look no, different from real no, dating apps? No, no, this is bullshit. Simulate the what the fuck? This dude's pulling this out of his ass. The average man does not get 25 likes a day. That is bullshit. If that was the case, you wouldn't have all these incels out here. No, that, that, that's just that is this video is so stupid. This this guy even sounds like an idiot. Let's start with reason number one there are more male than female users. Duh. I was able to find user gender data for Tinder and Bumble, two of the most popular dating apps in the world. In both apps, there were significantly more men using the app than women. Yeah. In our simulation, I'm going to keep it simple and assume we have two men for every woman, a ratio somewhere between Tinder's and Bumble. Okay, all right, okay, so now we're starting to make sense. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Walmart, yeah, Walmart's always cracking with the broads, dude. I swear to God, bro, every time I go anywhere and, uh, See my ring. Yeah, dude, I swear to God, bro. The, the shit, see your ring. Walk around with your wife. Then the broads will be looking at us like, oh, look, he's married, you know? Every married man that I know has always, like, taken his wife out on a date and, like, the waitress is being, like, extra nice to him and shit. It's because he's married, bro. You know what I mean? Um, not, it's not just the fact that you're already dating, but you're married. So you're kind of like stamped, you know what I mean? Um, shit. What is it called? Ashley Madison? That shit's going on in real life too, homie. Let's see. What about Figueroa? Yeah, dude, Figueroa. Um, right here in Oakland, they got East 14th International Boulevard. I would be careful from what I hear. People are getting robbed more out here in Oakland. Um Figueroa seems to be more like straightforward, like you pay for the service and you get what you pay for. Out here in Oakland, it's like, eh, for example, right? One time, me and my homie, we were uh, we we were driving around the twenties in East Oakland. It was like one or two in the morning. We were, you know, drinking, smoking. We were just stupid, right? When I was like twenty one or something, and we see all these broads. Hanging out right there on East 14th, you know, workers, ladies of the night. And we're interested, and we just pull up on them. We come down 27th to International, and there's these two just sexy fucking black broads, right? Just like two Cardi B's just chilling right there. And I'm like, hey, girl, what are you doing? She's like, what? What do you want? And I'm like, shit, I want you. She's like, all right, well, meet me at this hotel down the street. I'm thinking, no, fuck no, girl. You're setting me up to get robbed. I'm not meeting you at no fucking hotel. Are you crazy? Uh-uh. But over there on Fig, from what I hear, it's more of just like, here's the money. There's the trim, you know? Next. Um, one day, I'll go to the promised land, Figueroa. It's out there. It's out there, dude. I used to drive down Figueroa in my semi-truck. You're not allowed to put a semi-truck on certain parts of Figueroa, but I did it anyways. Um, I just wanted to see, I just wanted to see, like when I was done unloading at Pico Rivera, I would intentionally, or like, uh, around like, like Duarte or something, I would intentionally like go off route a little bit. I just wanted to see what, what fig looked like. And I'm like, Oh yeah, this looks a lot like Oakland. I felt like I was right back at home. You know, it almost seemed 
a little bit more active than the International Strip right here in Oakland, honestly. Anyone uh, try massage parlors? Yeah, you could do that. TJ Hong Kong Club is where you get the baddest Latinas. Shit. I, I heard about Hong Kong. I definitely got to go check that place out. Um, yeah, bro. On Fig. Dude, right here on, in, uh, in Oakland on International Boulevard. They're out here too. Dude, I would drive down... When I was living in Oakland, especially when I was living in the East... I was living by Eastmont Mall with some bride. And, dude, I would drive down International, right? And I would see some of these chicks. I'm like, man, that chick, I would fucking marry her. And there she is just fucking prostituting. Like, what the fuck are these girls doing? This is fucking... This is so stupid. Like, what the hell are they doing? But what can you do? There's nothing you could do, really. Um, let's see. So now this video is starting to make sense. Yeah, there's way more men than women. There's like probably double, if not triple the amount of men on a dating app than there are women. So it's starting to make more sense now. I ran the simulation again and the differences were big. I'm gonna give you a chance to pause the video in case you wanna to try to guess how many likes and matches users get. Okay, all right, okay. So now, now we're talking real here. All right, so on, on average, all right, I guess this is a part of what he pulled out of his study. And now it seems to, you know, starting to make more sense. How many likes do you think the women get? And how many likes do you think men get on Tinder or on a dating app? Me, I'd say a woman easily gets over 100 likes a day. Men, shit. The average man... The likes that they get compared to a women, I mean, compared to women, if we're gonna lump all the guys up into one petri dish, and we're gonna check their their Tinder apps and see how many likes they get, fuck three, and that's like being generous. I'll go with three. I'll go with three to a hundred. So, let's see. Let's see. We now start to see the first signs of a gender imbalance in the results. Because there are too many- Okay, so the average likes that a man gets on Tinder is, yeah, again, 3.12 to 6.26. I think that's off for women. I think women, they're, they're, it's, it's way higher for them. They get way more likes, you know? Uh, just because there's way more men than there are women. So they're the sought after commodity on these apps, you know. For every woman, the number of likes received by the women doubled and the number of likes received by the men halved. And when we look at the number of matches, something interesting happens. Women received an average of 50 likes. Since they like one out of four profiles, you would expect them to get an average of 12 or 13 matches. However, they only get six. That's because now there are so many male users that women don't even get a chance to see half of the users that liked them. They only see 100 profiles per day, and there are just too many men in the queue. At this point, it makes sense that women start to feel a bit overwhelmed by the amount of likes they receive. Because they often encounter intrusive behavior from men, that also makes them think carefully about who they give likes to. Men, on the other hand, are starting to get a bit desperate. Because they don't get a lot of likes, they know they can't be too picky and start giving likes more generously to improve their chances of getting matches. Hey, who's done Which that? leads us to reason number two. Who's done that, dude? I've definitely done that. Um, I've done that a lot. Like, you go on Tinder or Plenty of Fish or anything, and you're just like, 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 And you're not even looking at who you're liking. You're liking the ads. You're liking, like, even the the fucking he, she, trannies that go in there. You're liking everything. You're just like, 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 like. You're liking the fat broads. You're liking everything. You're liking the girls from fucking... From India and Africa trying to scam you, you just like, 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 and then, you know, you don't get shit. You know, it's like, damn, fuck. Even the, even the like the fat chicks didn't like me back. Like, fuck, dude. So, here's the thing: if you're not getting likes on these fucking dating apps, it's not really you. I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, if you're like this, if you're like, if you're someone who's like really fat, you know what I mean? If you're like out to here, 
You know, <laughs> you just like you stinking shit. If you're just a nasty motherfucker, okay, then it, it might be you. You gotta do some work, right? But if you're the average guy, and you know you look decent, and you take care of yourself, and you put some effort into making a decent dating app profile, it's probably not you. It's the system that you're using. It's just, it's just broken. Like these dating apps are just broken. In the early stages of these dating apps, yeah, they worked. I mean, dude, when Plenty of Fish was like on the up and up back in like the mocha space days, oh man, right? I pulled a few dates on Plenty of Fish and I was seeing this one girl from Newark for a few years until one day I just told her to fuck off for some reason. <laughs> uh, it was kind of a dick move for me to do that because she was actually a real good girl. Um, but yeah, back in the day, the dating apps were a lot easier to use. Nowadays, uh, not so much, you know? So the best thing that you could do if you're trying to date is to just go outside, right? Live your life, get out of the house, um, try to make friends, right? One thing that really helps is having a wingman. Believe it or not, having a wingman is great. Every time me and my homeboy from uh, Las Vegas, well, he was from Colorado, but, you know, me and him were roommates in Las Vegas. Every time we'd go out and hit the strip, dude, it, it's just so easy walking up to chicks or a chick or even like a group of chicks when there's two of you and you guys aren't coming off all creepy. You guys, you know, walking up to you, hey, girl, what's going on, you know? We're about to go on the link. You want to come with us? You know, or hey, wh what you doing, right? You're more social when you show up with like a friend rather than just by yourself, you know. But you could definitely uh, pull shit by yourself. If I was going to go approach chicks by myself, I'd probably go somewhere like the grocery store. If I was going to go hit on chicks in a group, I'd probably go with a friend to a nightclub. Like, like here's something, right? I might go out tonight, honestly. I, I think, uh, it depends if my homie does a live stream with me. But for example, I got a friend who's a DJ out here in the Bay, right? Now, going to one of his events, right, supporting him, you know, dude, that's like easy to pull a lot of trim right there because he knows everybody. I know him. I'll probably run to some people that I know there. You know what I mean? Go out. Get off of these dating apps, dude. A lot of these chicks that you wish you could match with on these dating apps, you could in real life if you just walked up to them and just, you know, and, and you're a polite gentleman, and, you know, you, you just build on your game, right? You got to get used to rejection and all that. But the more and more you do it, you get better at it. Let's see. The king, that's hella true. I hear Philippine, uh, Filipino women will worship the ground you walk on. That's what I hear too. That's why you have to stand out on your profile pic and your greeting message. Bro, that's true. They be looking for the way out. Not the women. Uh, not what women is not looking for the golden goose. <laughs> Just, yeah, we love you long time, huh? All that, all that kind of shit, dude. Uh, so here's something that you could do on a dating app. And this lets the chick automatically... You just letting her know what time it is, right? But you got to do this after you've been in the gym for at least like one to two years, right? And you've been dieting like really strict and you got like a real banging body, right? Go buy yourself a pair of some boxer briefs, <coughs> some Hanes, right? That's showing off your junk. Um, and get yourself like a tripod like this. Right? Get yourself a tripod like that and then, you know, aim it towards your bed and get on top of your bed and, you know, like take like underwear boxer pictures like you're going to be on the front cover of the boxer briefs right there at Walmart. You know what I mean? You make a dating profile like that when, you know, you're given the... uh the camera that look, right? Let me zoom. Let me open up my face a little bit more. You give the camera the look like this, like, you know, <laughs> you know, like, uh, bite your lip and shit. 
You know what I mean? Put on the boxer briefs, bite your lip. I don't know. Fucking probably put some like beads around you, right? You know, like 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 the anal beads and shit. Put them on there. Like put some anal beads around your neck with with with, with, with like a pair of some boxer briefs and just sit there like this. What's up, girl? I'm gonna tear your shit up. <laughs> you do that on Tinder? Oh man, the freaks come out. They won't just come out at night. They're gonna come out in broad daylight. You do that kind of shit, you know? Cause then they know that you ain't fucking around. They know that you're not gonna hit them up with the same old bullshit. Like, oh, I really like that sweater on you. Oh, you look so beautiful. Oh, where are you from? Oh, where are you from? Hayward? Oh, I live in Castro Valley. And no, no, you hit them up like, girl, I got these, I got these anal beads right here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put them in you and I'm gonna rip them out of your ass. <laughs> right? Now, hey, you guys think I'm joking, but I'm being serious. You guys want to stand out, right? You want to stand out on a dating app? That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Either that or just go to the grocery store, you know, and be a gentleman. So really the only way to stand out on a dating app nowadays is to just be a complete dog, you know, and, but, you know, put some effort into it, right? It, it's, 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 think of it like YouTube, right? Think of it like YouTube. Who are the most successful YouTubers? The most successful YouTubers are the guys that have been doing it for a long time and they have quality content, you know? So you need to make your dating profile quality and it's going to take some time too, right? And niche it instead of, you know, trying to look like your husband material, make your profile look like your straight up bedroom material, right? You make your profile on Tinder you set up your profile to where a, a chick sees it. She's like, oh, damn, he's going to tear my shit up. Watch how many more likes you get, you know? And so will the trans. Yeah, everyone's going to hit you up. I mean, if you're into that kind of thing, all good. But most guys, I'm assuming, are trying to get chicks and shit. You know what I mean? But, I mean, because what are we talking about right here? Guys are getting nothing. These guys are getting no matches at all. You know what I'm saying? Uh, bro, giving, bro giving dating advice, but got no hoes. Let's, uh, let's watch this. Men give more likes than women. According to this New York Times article from 2014, men are nearly three times as likely to like a profile than women on Tinder. So let's use those numbers. I'm updating the simulations that women and men give likes in 14 and 46% of cases respectively. So how do you think this is going to change the results? He's using the AI. Now the gender imbalance increases even further. Women get an average of 92 likes, whereas men only get seven. And Okay. So he did something to the algorithm. So what he's doing is he's just punching numbers into like just an algorithmic calculator, into an AI pretty much. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming this AI comes from data that they've gotten from Tinder, Bumble, POF, all this shit, right? So now, whatever he did, we get the average numbers of matches for women is 6.4 to men 3.2. I still think that that's off. Like, it looks more accurate than it was before. It just still looks off. It, it It's probably more of, like, the women, their average matches is probably closer to 9.5 or something. And the guys, it's probably still right there at a 3.2, honestly. The numbers of likes, um, 92.1 to 7.0. Um... One reason why I haven't gotten a lot of likes on Tinder is just because I haven't been using it lately. I haven't even been fucking with Tinder lately. But when I would put the effort in and spend some money on Tinder, yeah, I would definitely see um, see my likes go up, you know? And I ended up banging abroad um, in Long Beach. I spent the night out there, and it was straight in the back of the truck. And that was from Tinder. That was straight from Tinder. So, yeah, I mean, look, online dating can work, right? It can work. 
But here's the thing. you got to put a lot of effort into online dating. And with the effort that you're putting into online dating, if you put that same effort into the real world, you'd be able to get shit cracking a lot easier and more consistently, you know? As men like 46% of the users they see, these seven likes result on an average of 3.2 matches. Women get twice as many, an average of 6.4 matches per day. But things can get even more complicated for the average male user. Attractiveness is subjective, but the reality is that some profiles will be considered attractive by more users than others. Which brings us to reason number three. A small share of the users get a big share of the likes. In a Q&A okay. post from 2017 on Hinge... Okay, look at, look at what he just said right there. Which brings us to reason number three. A small share of the users get a big share of the likes. Okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing, all right? You need to figure out how to become that guy right there or whatever, that, how do I do it? <coughs> that guy. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out this OBS shit. You need to figure out how to become that guy right there, the guy getting all the likes. <coughs> how do you do that? I think I explained it pretty well. Um, who do women go goo goo gaga over? Uh, back in the day, it was Mark Wahlberg. Back in the day, it was uh, Brad Pitt. And, you know, I mean, who's on the, the cover of these, like, boxers, like these boxer briefs that they're selling over there at Walmart? It's, it's the hot dude who's, like, posing all sexual and shit. And what do people say about Tinder? Tinder is a hookup site. It's not really a dating site. So you got to set up your profile to where it's more of, like, you know, like you're the stud type of dude, right? So that's how you're going to... I honestly think that's how you're going to stand out. Because here's the thing. You guys might think I'm trolling, but here's the thing. If you don't do that, if you don't do that, now you're just going to be the average guy. You're, you know, when you set up your dating profile to make it look, I guess, just more sexual, and you, you obviously have to look good. I mean, if you got like a big old gut like I do right now, it's probably not going to work out. I mean, it might. Some chicks might think you look funny and shit. But nah, man. If you got like a good chest, you know what I mean? You got arms, right? You probably don't even need a whole six pack. But as long as you just got a good figure and you look good, pretty much with little to no clothes on, the ladies are, the, the ladies are going to see that. And they're going to be more interested into you. Because the average guy on Tinder, I'm willing to bet, they're just normal guys, right? They're, they're probably all good husband material, but they're, they're just normal guys with their phone, taking pictures with their phone, like this, that, with different types of like nice clothes and like maybe a suit or something. But now, nah, once they see the guy that's like with the boxer briefs on the bed, the chicks are like, oh shit, got a Brad Pitt right here. That's my take on it. I think that's how you become. That guy. Shit, fuck it. The guy on the screen. Or the guy on the screen. That's how you become that guy, right? Jesus Christ. I'm glad I'm figuring out OBS. I'm figuring it out. In a Q&A post from 2017 on Hinge's official website, up, one of the engineers behind the dating app... Let's see, what are you guys talking about? I'm glad that I have a good woman and four kids that are the glue, uh, that hold it together. But the downside is I have an empty wallet. Yeah. That's what happens at the end of the day. You definitely get the empty wallet. What up, Aug Augustine? Or Augie said hi to Augustine. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm finally figuring out OBS so we could do cool things like watch YouTube videos and react to them. Share some data about this imbalance. He mentioned that certain people get exponentially more attention than others. He reported that about half the likes from men were given to about 25% of women and half the likes from women were given to only 15% of men. This means that, especially with men, there's a small segment of users that get a large slice of the total likes. Let's try to include that in our simulation. 
I'm giving every user a score from 0 to 100% that determines how attractive they are perceived by other users. Until now, attractiveness has had no impact on the probability of getting likes. That means that every time a profile was shown, the probability of that profile being liked was 46 and 14% for women and men respectively, regardless of their perceived attractiveness. Okay. I'm now looking for a new distribution such that the top users get exponentially more likes, but while making sure the average like percentages stay the same. I went for the simplest formulas I could come up with, and you can find my assumptions on the screen in case you're interested. Basically, I assume that users with an attractiveness score of 0 have 0% chance of getting likes, and users with an attractiveness score of 100 have 100% chance of receiving a like. This is admittedly an oversimplification, but since I couldn't find any real data, I'm trying to keep it as simple as I can. With these curves, 50% of the likes given by men go to the top 27% of women, and 50% of the likes given by women go to the top 10% of men which is quite close to the numbers reported by Hinge, so this should be reasonably accurate. Let's run our final simulation. You can try to guess the results now. The, the women are still going to be up. This was a bit of a trick question. The numbers stay the same. The difference is, now the distribution is skewed by the top users who get most of the likes. That means that the app... I don't really get it. I kind He kind of lost me. Right, right there, right? Look, I'm not that fucking bright. You know what I'm saying? It's easy for me to get lost, and especially when you're just talking and shit. Um, I guess what he's doing now is he's comparing attractive profiles to other attractive profiles from men to women. I guess that's what he's doing now. But um, it, it's still the same. Women are still up. But here's the thing. I honestly think that the people who really win on dating apps, it's not, it's not the average guy, and it's it's not women either. It's the most attractive guy. The most attractive guy is the one that makes out on Tinder, that you know, makes out of the bank with a bag of money on Tinder. And how do you become that most attractive guy on Tinder? Well, you got to set up your profile. I think. Look at other attractive guys, right? And I, I, I honestly think, go to Walmart, look at like a, a fucking, a pack of boxer briefs and look at the guy that's on there and try to get like dude and take pictures like dude, right? I mean, women want to see that, oh man, th th this guy could tear my shit up, right? Like, believe it or not, women probably enjoy sleeping around way more than we do, right? They probably enjoy, you know, a roll in the sack way more than we do. They're probably way hornier than us guys to keep it real. So that's honestly the way that you're going to uh, increase your chances on Tinder. That's, that's how you're going to stand out. Because like I said, if you don't do that, you're just the average guy. You're just another run-of-the-mill Joe Schmo on Tinder. Averages no longer describe the experience of the average user. So let's add a new metric, the median. In other words, how many likes and matches does the average user get? And now we can see the average male user only receives one like and zero matches. If you look at the average number of likes for different attractiveness scores, we see that the top 10% of male users get 37 likes on average, whereas the average users get somewhere between zero and one like. And if you look at the average number of matches, something interesting happens. The top 10% of men actually get more matches than the top 10% of women. They get fewer likes, but because they're less selective than women, they actually manage to get more matches. I wonder if this also happens in real life. Yeah. As I tried exactly. to make my simulation more realistic, the number of likes received by the average man went down from 25 to 12 to 7. Okay. So it's just like I said. The guy that's making out on... Um on Tinder is the good looking guy, right? It's not the chick. The woman is not, women are not winning on dating apps. The most attractive guy is winning on a dating app. That's good news. That's good news. Because if there's things about yourself that you can fix and you could, you know, set up your profile to make yourself look like a boxy brief model. Oh, God damn it. Did my shit just cut off again? I got disconnected for a second. 2 1. 
Once again, this was just my attempt to simulate a dating app based on the little information that I could find. It may or may not describe your experience with dating apps. For example, I couldn't find data for the number of profiles users see every day, so I just assumed it was 100, and I didn't include factors like different cultures and demographics and the impact of premium subscriptions that give advantages to paying users. Nonetheless, the simulation helped me understand what's probably happening inside these dating apps. So, what are the key takeaways here? This video is by no means making an argument against the use of dating apps. Meeting online has become the most popular way US couples connect. So, really? dating apps do work and many relationships wow. were made possible thanks to them. Wow. My personal takeaway of this video is that, due to the reasons that I mentioned, dating apps can give us a distorted perspective of the actual dating world. And I think we should be aware of the impact this can have on the experience and self-esteem of the users. Because in the end, I think this imbalance can be harmful for both men and women. Men will struggle to get matches, which only gives them an incentive to like as many profiles as they can to improve their chances of a match. And women, when they get a match... No. The average man is going to struggle to get matches, right? Women, on the other hand, they're flooded with matches and likes. So... Men and women, they're kind of in the same boat, right? They're not getting any matches. And the reason why they're not getting any matches is because the women are just flooded with matches, right? So if you think about it, the average guy is losing. The most attractive guy, he's winning. But even the most attractive guy with the most attractive uh, dating profile, he's still going to be shit out of luck on a lot of chicks that he probably could have, you know, tagged, you know, because they're just get a match with a match. Oh my god! My headphones keep disconnecting from the Bluetooth. It's so annoying, dude. They know that he's probably giving a like to every second profile he sees, so there's a good chance he's not even genuinely interested. That's my take, but let me know what you think in the comments. If you like stories with data and yeah, sounds about right. Dating apps are more dangerous than you think. Oh, God. This is going to be one of those emotional videos. Tinder experiment proves how brutal it is for average guys. Oh, yeah, that's that incel right there. Wheat Waffles. That guy's, yeah, that guy's like one of the biggest incel YouTubers. What are you guys talking about? Online dating is gay. Um, well, you heard what uh, they said in that study that most people... Um, meet online nowadays, believe it or not. I think that's kind of hypocritical to say that. Like, it might not even be true if the average man struggles to get matches online to turn around and say, oh, but most people meet online when it sounds like most people are struggling to meet online. So it's like they're kind of contradictory to each other. But look, online dating is good if you got your shit set up right, right? If you got a good profile, if you look like a sex symbol, because it sounds like Tinder is a hookup site. And through hookups, I guess you can meet a chick. When I pull out my Richard Rippenheimer, I get to tripping. You have money, you have options. Um... Well, here's the thing. If you have money, you could actually... Let me make myself bigger here since I'm, I'm the one talking. Here's the thing. If you have money, you could actually set yourself up for failure. Because now you're getting a bunch of women that are coming after you and wanting to date you just because you have money. Right? So just because you have money, I mean... Look, ultimately, you need to be like a good package. Um, I think the most successful marriages are, you know, when the, like the the sexual attraction is still really good. And eventually, as you get older, that goes away. But you know, as you get older, you guys are never gonna forget those fun times. I, I don't I don't fucking know. I'm not some like dating expert or whatever. Somebody in the chat wanted to talk about dating. And dating apps, that's why I brought this shit up. But let's see. Nah, Mike, it's just you. Huh. 
Yeah, so you guys are disagreeing with it right now. That dating apps aren't so bad. Let's see what the incel guy has to say about it. Wheat Waffles. He has a million views on this video. Let's see what he has to say. Guys, online dating is like trying to find water in a desert for men and supermarket shopping for women. In this video, I'm going to show you the results of a Tinder experiment of an average, maybe even above average guy. And by the end, I'll prove just how bad these apps have gotten and just how much the odds are stacked against you as a man. Anyway, this is our male subject and here's a few more photos. To give a little bit of background, this man is actually an article writer who I've been chatting to on Instagram recently. And he's made a kind allowance for me to use the data he's collected off his own Tinder profile. That's kind of sus. I mean... I mean, homeboy, he kind of looks like he could swing both ways. So why is he talking to some guy in the DMs like that online? Uh, who knows? But uh, just right off the bat, that seems kind of sus. For this video, he describes himself as average looking, maybe even a bit above. I'd largely agree with this and think he falls somewhere around the 6 out of 10 range. He's from Canada, which is where he still lives and is based in a meat. See ya, Richard. Have fun barbecuing. Save a plate for us. Lucky. I bet he's going to make something fire right now, too. Medium-sized city of one million people. He's 22 years old. He ran the experiments for four months, and as shown by the thumbnail, oh, he yeah. made over 16,000 swipes. There's oh, yeah. He's 22? Definitely sus, for sure. The younger you are, <laughs> um... And especially if you're doing weird shit like DMing another guy, uh, the higher probability of that being sus activity. Two more things that are noteworthy. One, he purchased Tinder Gold, which for anyone who doesn't know, is the paid version of Tinder that gives certain... Yeah, here's the thing. If you want to get more activity, you got to get Tinder Gold. When I was getting a lot of activity on Tinder, and I was actually like going out on dates in Bakersfield, it's when I had Tinder Gold. So Tinder Gold definitely works, dude. For sure it works. Bonuses and makes your profile shown more in the card stack. And two, he's fairly tall. Six foot three to be precise. I found this very noticeable by looking at how often he towers over people in his pictures. So this factor will likely have influenced his results. Now let's get to the profile itself. He used three pictures on his account. The first, just him with a dog. The second, a holiday picture <coughs> in front of what I believe to be a frozen waterfall. And lastly, just a basic photo sitting down with a clear view of his face. As for the bio, real basic. The name of his university, which I can't say in the video. His height, of course, because why wouldn't you if you're six foot three? And then just a few hobbies he takes part in, like snowboarding and hiking. Last two things, his age preferences were set from 18 to 25, and his maximal allowable range was set to the max of 100 kilometers. So, without wasting any more time, now let's get to the actual results. Again, over the course of four months, he swiped a grand right. total of 16,000 times. Of right. these 16,000, he swiped right or liked a little under 8,000. Which means he swiped mm. left or disliked mm. roughly the same. That's a lot of views of Tinder, man. That's too much time on your phone. Hell no. I don't even know if I can spend that much time on Tinder, dude. That's a lot of swiping and just being on your phone, dude. Go out and talk to a broad. Amounts giving a like rate of 47.3%. Pretty much half and half. Now, for the nearly 8,000 women he liked, here's the kicker. Just 290 of them matched. So the other 7,000 or whatever didn't. They either did not think he was good enough or they simply didn't see him. This is an abysmally low 3.7% match rate. And if we average this figure out over the entire duration of the experiment, we find he's grappling with just 2.5 matches per day. Now on to message conversations. Of the oh, 290 right. women he matched with, 99 of them had at least one message being sent or received. Alright, so 
I don't know. I can't listen to this guy's voice. That fucking, like, that accent that he has, it's like nails on a chalkboard. I never really liked that, like, European accent like that. It just sounds like, would you like some coffee? Would you like some coffee? Um, dating apps are horrible for men. Would you like some coffee? I can't listen to that kind of shit, dude. Why do you got to talk like that? Fuck. It, it's not coffee. It's, it's coffee. <laughs> what the fuck? I can't, I can't listen to that shit for too long. Why don't men, why don't women reply on Tinder slash Hinge? Let's see. Hey guys, Damien here from School of Attraction. And today I want to talk to you about something that I know annoys the hell out of most guys. And that's when you get a match on Tinder or Bumble Hinge and you write a first message and she just never replies. And maybe you try writing something else to try to get her engaged and she just doesn't reply. Or worse, she just removes your firmware list altogether. And it's really annoying for guys because, let's be honest, most guys aren't get, getting that many matches to begin with. So, I'm going to solve that problem today. I'm going to tell you exactly what parts of your profile are most likely to cause this problem. So you can look through them with me step by step with each part. No, because this guy has that nasty European accent either. So, I can't even watch that video that like any longer at all. I, I'm going to show you how to make your dating profile more attractive. And we're going to go step by step. <laughs> Why did I talk like that, dude? I just don't... Don't get it. Dude, everyone dates online. Yeah. I think this was a good practice with OBS. Right? I finally got OBS down. I'm definitely going to be using OBS in the future. More often. Like, for sure, dude. OBS, this is great, man. Um, I really want to go live with my homie, man. Let's see. Did he text me? He said he was going to his mom's. But, uh... Motherfucker. Why does it keep... To, ugh. Met my fiance on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Instagram's the best, dude. You know what I want to do? This sounds fucked up. I want to bang a married chick. I just think that's hot. You know? Like a chick who's active in a marriage. Just, you know, when she gets off work, we go to a hotel room. And, like, her... Husband or her family, they'll never find out. You know what I mean? That's what I want to do. I did that shit um, a few times when I was in my early 20s. The first time I did that shit, I met this girl on AFF. AFF is like, AFF is a straight up hookup site. AFF is Adult Friend Finder. And I met this chick, right? A thick little thing, right? Fucking curly hair and everything. And it was like, I guess it was kind of like a fetish thing. They like, they wanted like the husband wanted to watch me with his wife and it just didn't work out. I don't think the wife was into it, but then she would come down to Oakland for like business meetings and shit. Right. Like she would go from like Sacramento to Oakland. And when she would come to Oakland, she would have to like spend the night in a hotel. So one night she picked me up and like she hit me up a week before that said hey i'm gonna be in oakland next week and i was like oh what, you and your husband she's like nah just me i'm like yeah fuck yeah dude no fuck your husband you know and uh yeah bro it was really it was really cool uh here's a tip don't go live on weekends people are out and about on saturday yeah that's what i've always heard uh but hey tommy um I've been practicing OBS, so this is really just a practice run. It's all good. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I was going to go out to the city today. It's a beautiful day outside, right? Uh, I did some good shit today. I got myself a, a, a bench press, and uh, I figured out OBS. I got some furniture for my place. I'm slowly and slowly starting to gather up furniture for when I move out of my dad's house. But, uh... Yeah, if you want to use Tinder, go to Walmart and look at the model for the boxer briefs and make your Tinder profile look like that. Because then when a, when a broad sees your Tinder profile and you look like a boxer brief model, she knows. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, I might get married to him, but we're going to like pretty much let like fuck, you know. 
but before any of that happens. Like, this dude is with the shit. Tinder is worse than you thought. Oh, is this Moon? Oh, yeah, Moon's amazing. Let this icon represent 100,000 Tinder users. My audio. You know what? I got to go out and buy headphones. Hold on. I got to reconnect my headphones. One second. Reconnecting the headphones right now. Connect. Okay. Jesus. This is what 1 million Tinder users looks like. This is what all the girls on Tinder looks like. And this is what all the guys on Tinder looks like. Yeah, yeah, of course. But there's still some dudes winning and on then, Tinder. And then, there's you. How do they do it, you ask yourself? Seeing all those couples, all those Instagram pics, all those love stories, it baffles you. It makes you angry. They got lucky. It's a rigged game. They were born with good genetics. They're not happy. I don't want a relationship anyway. I just don't have the time. I'm an introvert. I'm unlucky. Love? Hi. Getting married? That all seems like a distant dream. So as a last resort, you download Tinder because it's better this than nothing. Tinder. You tell yourself, maybe this will be fun. Maybe you'll finally feel something. Maybe you'll find the one. Some hope with fancy photos and tactical pickup lines, they'll find love through sheer force. Others hope by filling a dad-shaped hole, they'll become confident and empowered. And the rest? They're falling down the spiral of loneliness, self-doubt, depression or divorce, desperate to feel that spark they felt before. You look for quick fixes, you look for apps to find love, because deep down you're living a life of quiet desperation. But meanwhile, all you really want is someone to laugh with, someone to share those memories with. And you don't have long until it's too late. But as months and years go by, you come to a harsh realization. Those dreams you had of meeting that girl, traveling around the world, escaping your virtual reality, having your own family, they'll forever remain that way. Just dreams. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, downer Debbie vibes, man. Downer fucking Debbies. Let's see. What up, Mendoza? Hola, como estas? I'm hungry. I think I'm gonna get off here. Tinder experience, 18-year-old woman tries being a man. No, I want to hear it. This isn't what, I've, what I was searching for. Um, women's review of Tinder. Women react to dating profiles. No, I don't give a fuck about that. My first time using Tinder... Tinder Bumble fires 40% of employees after Gen Z rejects feminist dating apps. What's this? Shares of Bumble plunged as much as 11% to an all-time low Wednesday morning after the dating app gave a downbeat quarterly revenue forecast late Tuesday. Apparent uh, Bumble reporting stronger revenue and user spending for the first quarter. Joining us right now uh -oh. uh, with where she's swiping right. How do you like that? Swiping oh. right in wow. her own business. Chat GPT. Uh, Whitney Wolford, uh, CEO of Bumble. <laughs> Very nice to see you. Nice to see you. Um, so we were talking, before we even talk about earning. Oh, it's a bribe. That, that owns Bumble. That six out of every ten uh, couples are, are meet over a dating app. Is that really true? Dating wow. is now... Um, starting online and this wow. is normal according to a Stanford study that was right. recently updated it's six and ten couples starting online now do you have any do you get to track by the way people on Bumble to find out like I mean is is Bumble have a better hit rate of this of the of the is it seven out of ten for Bumble or six you know so we don't have any way to you know track right. every single couple that meets online there's millions of interactions you know at any given moment and so we were actually in our office the other day coming through what felt like thousands of wedding invitations. Here's the thing. What are we? We're about a minute into it. And this YouTube broad, she has not reacted to this video at all. So she just straight up robbing the content. You got to like pause it and talk and give feedback and shit. And she didn't even give an intro. She just straight up robbed this content from this news site or whatever. And so many of them were actually bumble themed with bees and hives and 
asking us to come to their wedding or their baby shower. It was really remarkable. And so this is having real impact on people's lives. Dating is a very indestructible demand on a global I basis. I mean, no matter what has happened throughout history, recessions or wars, P love Even prevails. pandemics, even pandemics, you, love prevails. and you probably so does hooking up and being a 304 it's indestructible hey guys it's your girl melanie and that was nine months ago with the ceo of bumble who guess what she's one of the co-founders of what's that ho app what's that hookup app what's the app that started the demise of western dating culture as we know it and created 304s women western women who only want the top chads the you know the oh, nine God. ten chads the woman can be a four or five but oh, that God. chad Here is going to netflix and chill and knock her down you know do a skeet down into her you know use her as a dna receptacle for the evening and so now she thinks that dna has magically transformed her <laughs> into a nine ten really a ten a top ten woman <laughs> And she's beautiful and she's fine and glorious because we know every woman's a 10. Every woman's beautiful. No woman is fat. No woman is ugly. Yeah. You men are. You men are. And we can clearly say it and see it. But every nah. woman is beautiful. And no, nah, that's not true, dude. I've, uh, how many fat brides have I banged in my life? That, that one from Modesto and the one in Oakland. Right? Trying to think. Two. Yeah, two. I've been two fat broads in my life. And let me tell you something. Those fat broads, dude, they suck you off like a vacuum. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Just because, like, if you, guys, fellas, if you want to get, like, oh, fucking headphones, dude, I got to keep this Bluetooth window open. So goddamn annoying. Um, fellas, you guys want to get sucked off like no other? Hook up with a fat broad, right? Should do you right. And sexy and a goddess and men want her, even if she's just a skeet receptacle for the evening. <laughs> so what happened with that? What is that? What? Here's the thing. Here's the thing, fellas. Broads like this, or like her, the black chick right here, they talk like they're oh like like they're so much better than those what they call three oh fours or whatever. She's the same way. She's the same way. She's done that shit too. I mean, this chick right here, she's done some of the freakiest shit just like any other chick, right? Just because a chick wants to be like a hoe or whatever, she wants to sleep around. That's her fucking business, dude. All this hoe shaming, slut shaming, it's for the birds, man. To me, it's just really childish. Like, oh, yeah, don't hang out with that girl. God damn it. Like, oh, yeah, don't hang out with that girl. She's a slut. It's stupid. We're grown adults, man. Who cares if a chick is a slut? She ain't hurting you. What is that app? Tinder. So, yes, this woman is one of the co-founders of Tinder. She had some type of scandal there. Left created Bumble, which is the dating app that allows women to choose the men, which we already know. It's it, it. This broad right here, the Tinder, the, the Tinder broad, she's the real Tinder swindler. Rich as hell, dude. It's, it's so stupid. It's such a stupid premise because women already do that on the apps. Women are choosing the top 10% of men it went down to five in a study from Tinder actually shows women are swiping right on 1% of men and leaving the rest of the men, average men, even above average men, men who are on their level. Even men say the woman is a four or five, the guy can be above her in looks and everything else. But because she was a DNA receptacle for Chad and Tyrone and Thug Roan, then she thinks she's special and she's above. Okay. All right. All right. Shut up. Oh, yeah, dude. I could tell just by looking at that broad, at the thumbnail. <laughs> she's she's talking about herself, pretty much. <laughs> she's talking about herself. She's hot, too. I would definitely fucking... 
uh, I'll do all that DNA shit with her. What's your uh, what your competition on dating apps is like? Well, let's see. All right, today I am going to be showing you what your competition is like on online dating apps. You know, because I feel like most normies, like the mindset is to, you know, they get the app. They don't actually know who they're going against. I mean, if you're playing a sport, you're probably going to want to see who you're going against um, just to see if you have a chance or not. But um, I mean, yesterday I was on like a, a 20. It was crazy. I was on like a 20 person streak, like swiping on dudes who put like six, one, six, two, six, six, like crazy heights, you know, in their bios. And I was like, Jesus Christ. And then all of a sudden, you know, it went dark and I got a bunch of sub fives for like 20 dudes straight. And I was like, damn, like this, this app is like, it's, it's crazy, man. But um, I mean, this dude right here, like the, what I opened the app to see, so does he even have a, yeah, he's a bio future Dilf just moved here. Nice one. Um, but it's anyway, I'm going to go through dark, like the, dude. uh, the new DMs I got, um, Jesus there's Christ, one dude, see? he said, slap that. me, what was this? you look like the perfect kind of crazy slap me. Like who the, f who's going to take <laughs> you seriously? Like, like, I don't understand, like wh why would why would that, like, how's this going to work? You know, saying slap me like this dude is like, <laughs> <laughs> he said, slap me. Get the fuck out of here. What the fuck? <laughs> Ignore me at best. Like, why would you say slap me? Um, I can, and here's... He looks like the type of dude that would say slap me, too. What the fuck is wrong with these motherfuckers, dude? I think, like, I could just imagine. Can you imagine, like, these, um, these red pill PUA dating coaches sitting here and telling you, bro, you ain't doing it right. You gotta, you gotta, uh, you know... Do the um the texting game, bro. You gotta be flirty, seductive, bro. You have to know how to text. I ain't gonna give a shit how you text. Look at how many people I have to choose from. You think I'm gonna actually read this shit? I'm just gonna go on yeah, the chat, no. you know? I don't really, I wouldn't care what these guys have to say. And yo, most of these um, what is it? Uh, most of these like openers, like these cringy pickup lines, they're cringe. They're so bad, man. They really are. Let's see. Not gonna lie, I'm good at pong. I'm not good at Pong, but I'm good at other things, bro. This dude, oh, I, this dude is, has in his bio, he's 6'6", six, six, man. 6 foot 6. Jeez, man. It's crazy tall. Uh, this is kind of fucked up putting everybody on blast on let's Tinder. Let's see, this dude's gym max. I ain't even going to shy away from this. I have a thing for, you know, goth girls. But what's up, lol? Okay, you want to know something? Like, when dudes, when dudes do this shit, when they message a day later or a week later or a month later, like, that is, like, the most, like, embarrassing shit in the world. This dude's gym maxed. And like I said before, I noticed, like, most guys on here are gym maxed. Like, that's, like, the bare minimum to, like, just qualify as a normie now. This dude blew me a kiss. Hey, you're hot. <laughs> he put the swipe note. There's a guy on what here. I gotta fuck? find his DM. He he said like, in, in his um, bio, he said he was fuck? six foot eight and an entrepreneur, and he sent me a message that said send me feet pics. I was like, what the fuck? Why are you like? Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see, Rob. Can you cut? Oh, what the? F I have a knife play kink. How about we get together and you sit on my lap and we can just talk about the first thing that pops up. What the fuck? Uh, there's another gym dude. He's trying to put in the work, I see. Let's see. He's putting in the work. That's why I bought Hey, I'm writing shit. about the finer things in life. I was wondering if I could interview you. That is corny as hell, bro. Like, these are so corny, man. Uh. So just tell the chick that you want to, that you just want to sleep with her. Right? Um. Yeah. Shit, when I get back on Tinder, I'm going to make my shit look like a boxing brief model. And I'm going to tell these bras what's up. Might as well. Man, let me check. Because look, all these guys are average. Cute. What the hell? Is this Chad? Jesus Christ. That's hell. Is this a real person? Sus. What the hell? That dude's sus as hell. All right, well. He doesn't even look straight. That fool looks straight. <sighs> Howdy, goth girl, dopey motorcycle mechanic combo. I don't even know. Hey, lady, I like your face. Oh, this is another dude who goes to the gym all the time. All right, well. <sighs> You're cute. We should link up sometime. Damn, bro. This dude's like 4,000 miles away, and you're talking about linking up? Like, Jesus. This dude's from, like, a whole nother country. <laughs> 
I haven't been in a car accident before, but I wouldn't mind hitting your rear end. Like, bro, these, uh, like, who's going to respond to that seriously, man? Like, th these are the guys. <laughs> what the fuck? That was a good one. I've never heard that one before. What did he say? What did he say? Talk about linking up. Like, Jesus. This dude's from, like, a whole nother country. <laughs> I haven't been in a car accident before, but I wouldn't mind hitting your rear end. Like, bro, these, <laughs> like who's going to respond to that seriously, man? Like, th these are the guys you were actually, when you are on Tinder, these are the guys that you're going against. These people <laughs> saying, like, this just dumb shit. <clears throat> <sighs> oh, God. Let's see. This dude's Jim Max. It's like, there's so many on here that are Jim Max, man. They got, like, okay. all the six foot, over six foot in the bottom. All right, okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing, all right? Before you even get on these dating apps, you need to take like a year off, especially a lot of you motherfuckers watching because a lot of you motherfuckers that are watching, you guys are truck drivers. You guys are hella fat, <laughs> most of you guys, right? So stop doing over-the-road trucking. Start, you know, dieting. Go home, diet, right? Lose a lot of weight. Get yourself a six-pack like all these dudes. And then tell a chick, look, I've never been to a, in a car accident before, but I would love to hit your rear end. <laughs> oh, oh my God, that's hilarious. That's funny, dude. Oh. these headphones are fucking ridiculous, dude. They keep disconnecting. Now I gotta connect them again. Jesus Christ, these headphones. You know. Uh, see, it looks like my attempt to scare you away was unsuccessful. I guess you're more confident than average. What? What, is, what are you even talking about, bro? What does he even? What does that even mean? <laughs> oh, is this dude a Discord mod? Oh, bro, I feel bad for that guy, man. He he unironically needs a haircut. Like like unironically needs a haircut and um to shave. Let's see this dude, wait. Let me break your back. What an opener, bro. Hell yeah. What an opener. Ugh. Man. That's what you gotta tell him. You really yeah. think I like why what makes me like there's no way I would stand a shot like with all these guys in here, man. You yeah, know? There is. <laughs> Oh my god. I mean some of them it's like some of them are Chad, some of them are sub five. It's like Look. But at the end of the day it's just I'll tell you what though. I'll definitely tell you what. If I was a chick, I wouldn't even bother reading any of those fucking messages. There's just too many. There's just way too many. I would look at that shit and I'd be like, Oh, fuck this. Right? And I'd you know, I would look at that shit. And all those messages and matches and all that and all those likes. And I would just be overwhelmed. And I would just... I probably wouldn't delete my Tinder, but I wouldn't use it. And that's what most of Tinder is on the female side. It's just a bunch of chicks who have active accounts. But because they're flooded with messages like that, they just leave their account up, but they don't use it. And then you go and like all these accounts that aren't really active accounts, right? I mean, yeah, they're on the site. But they're not actively being used, like trying to look for a date, you know? So, yeah, the best thing for dating is to just, you, you see a chick that you like in real life and go talk to her at the grocery store or whatever. Augustine thinks about being a girl. Transgender man acting as a woman picking up guys on Tinder. Well, he was doing this as a study, right? This is a good thing to do. Uh, for anyone, if you're ever interested in why you're not getting a lot of play on Tinder or on online dating apps, set up a dummy profile as a chick, and then you'll see, right? And you'll see how bad it is on their end, right? So, I think that's enough for the dating segment. Let's, uh, let's see what's going on in real life. ET Transport? Fucking 
Kevin Samuels again. Working in retail means you find these a lot. Febreze designing its packaging to hide the fact it's only half full. If companies will do this with their awesome, life-changing products that they care so much about, then what makes you think they won't do it to you, the employees? Anyways, with everything being so expensive now, I thought it would be fun to look at ways where corporations stealthily boost their profits under the cover of inflationary pressure or whatever else they can convince you of. It's not like you'll ever get to see those numbers. The only way we really even know about this is through earnings calls. Usually it's something like, we need to stay competitive, so what do you guys we think raised about? prices. And uh, we're just shut the fuck up. What do you guys think about Jake Paul fighting Mike Tyson? I think it's kind of stupid. I think it's really dumb. You heard it. But I do got a lot of respect for Jake Paul as a content creator. Um, he's definitely an inspiration. But I think now Jake Paul. He's at a point where he's kind of maxed out YouTube. If I was Jake Paul, I would just take my money and chill, dude. Like, fuck all the attention. I mean, YouTubers come to YouTube to try to make it big on YouTube. And if you make it big on YouTube, that means you've made a lot of money on YouTube. I mean, that's the ultimate goal. Once you've made your money, to just go right off into the sunset, right? But... Yeah, I still got a lot of respect for homeboy right here. Oh, I got my headphones. Right, mother. Headphones. Reconnect. I gotta go buy new headphones like now, dude. Now I gotta buy them. I'm fighting Mike Tyson. I'm the best ever. The rematch is here. And not only do I have the honor of fighting one of the two oh, most famous boxers to ever live, it's also happening live on that. Oh, look out, this push right here. A good push by Tyson. You said the fight's gonna be on Netflix? What do you mean by that? Isn't, isn't Netflix where you go to watch movies? It was until now. This is the first ever professional live sports event on Netflix. And with Netflix in over 500 million households and 260 million subscribers, we plan on this being the biggest fight of the 21st century, dummy. Who is putting on this event and where will the match be held? Well, it's our most valuable promotions event. My first time fighting in the stadium, Dallas, Texas. Oh, you're mad at me for fighting Mike Tyson? Imagine this. Jake, we got the biggest deal ever. You versus Mike Tyson, live on Netflix. You're gonna entertain millions of people and make an unbelievable amount of money. What do you think? Nah. Exactly, <laughs> that's what I thought. July 20th, be there. Good boy. You guys gonna watch it? Oh, man, I can't wait for the night of the 20th. Are you guys gonna watch the, uh, the Paul versus Tyson fight? I'll watch it, fuck it, I'll be a sheep. I'm gonna make you my girlfriend. I'm gonna make Mike my girlfriend. I'm gonna make sure you kiss me good with those big lips. You take into the <laughs> ring a lot of rage. But well, you've also never been punched by the most dangerous man in history. Hey, he's still throwing a punch, dude. Mike is still happened, happened. You're no good for boxing. What the fuck? Fucking fuck ass white boy. He's crazy. <laughs> exactly. That's what I thought. I was, what July 20th. Be there. Dude, Jake's hella funny, oh, dude. Oh, man, I can't wait for the night of the 20th. I'm gonna make you my girlfriend. I'm gonna make Mike my girlfriend. I'm gonna make sure you kiss me good with those big lips. You take into the ring a lot of rage. But you've also never been punched by the most dangerous man in history. <laughs> Does it pose any problem to you? It's, it's a, a fight. fight. Whatever, Whatever happens, happens, happens. You're no good for boxing! Fuck you, you punk ass white boy! He crazy fighter pay! Putting woman's mighty on a pedestal! Look what I've done for this sport! You won't shoot without me! I'll be watching on Netflix. I'm here, you're, you're gonna see. Yeah, you will be watching. Everyone's gonna be watching. No shit. I'm just so glad to have the honor <laughs> to step in the ring with one of the most brutal and most vicious and most ruthless champions there's ever been. That's my style. style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. He wants to rip your heart out and eat his children. But on July 20th, I promise you, I'll come out victorious. You know, Jake, honestly, this is a huge fight. I got to give it to you. The way you're blending two generations of Shut boxing. Shut the fuck up. 
I wish you had kids so I could stomp on their testicles. Stomp on their testicles. <laughs> what? Have a nice fight, Jay. F off. Fuck off. I knew he was gonna Why say you that. Have to talk I like knew he was gonna that. say I'm that. I'm talking to you the way I want to talk to you. You, you don't like it? Turn off your station. station. And once I found out the fight was on, I had to tell my family members that Mike Tyson signed the contract, big boy. He signed the contract. Hi. This is trolling, dude. What the fuck is that on your face? <laughs> hey, did I tell you that I'm fighting Mike Tyson? Well, here's the thing. Mike is definitely doing Jake a favor by doing this, even just by entertaining this. And it's because uh, Mike Tyson, he's definitely, like, good friends with the Paul brothers. So he's definitely hooking homeboy up. <laughs> what if he knocked you out? Bro, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm going to fight Mike Tyson on that Oh, dude, Logan is fucking yeah. so jealous, I dude. Fucking yeah, baby. <laughs> I fucking do it. <laughs> oh, my God. No. Logan's hey, uh, That's my eat your ear. <laughs> I can't believe it. That was Nina's first question. What if he eats your ear? Wow. Fucking wow. We back in Dallas. Where... <laughs> Did you ever think in a million years this would happen? No. <laughs> the, just no. Just absolutely not. Growing up, who was your favorite boxer? Mike Tyson. Mike, right? Fuck yeah. Fuck yes. <laughs> Cause um, I'm going to be fighting him. No way. In July. Dude. On Netflix. Are you fucking kidding me, Dad? Yeah. He's gonna be the hardest hitting motherfucker you ever fought. I know. <laughs> Dude, holy fuck, I'm gonna be freaking out. Yeah. Tyson. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks like he's training. Like he's like. He is. You know he's training for. So. Dude, is this real? <laughs> is this fucking happening? <laughs> yeah. You swear to God, bro? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> dude, let's fucking go. Is this real or are you bullshit? Dude? This is real. Is this on Netflix? <laughs> dude, this is fake. Bro, are you fucking changing the game? Bro, let's fucking go. God, you fucking, I, feel like, I don't know if you're prank. I mean, I think that's kind of crazy. Fucking... Yeah, the live stream looks like shit right now. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, Jake Paul, he got to a point in his career where he knows everyone's going to watch, right? You got to respect it. You definitely got to respect it. That's, a, that's fucking, it's been a lot of years of work to be able to, you know, confidently say that. I, it's real, it's real. Okay, okay, stop right there. Everyone just kept on asking me, including my mom, why would you step into the ring with Iron Mike Tyson? He's going to kill you and knock you out. Well, it all started four years ago when I met Mike Tyson at his ranch. And we're here, Tyson Ranch, about to meet the legend. We're a little nervous, you know? I watched Mike growing up, so, uh, this is cool. It's cool to be here. Look at this, bro. These are Mike Tyson's gloves right here. Jeez, these are the ones I think in the video where you're just eating people alive. How much do you think we could sell these for? <laughs> <laughs> so, am I scoring Mike next, or? Huh? Yeah. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> you ready to take on Mike? No, 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 sir. Yeah. I'll play Mike in chess. Or something that doesn't involve physical contact. It was all going great. I was meeting my childhood hero for the first time. What's up, Mike? Hey, Rob. How are you, Mars, man? Mars loved it, huh? Good to meet you. And then, he said this. Where you from, Lope? Uh, I'm Jake, I'm Jake. Did you hear that? Where you from, Lope? Where you from, Lope? I mean, people, <laughs> imagine like meeting your childhood hero for they the first like time. They look like each other, dude. Oh, they well. call you your brother's name. We don't even fucking look alike. And ever since that day, <laughs> ever yeah, since do. that day, Mike. <laughs> you guys are very similar too. I've wanted to knock you the fuck out. You, I'm Mike. just kidding. I'm just kidding. 
I'm just kidding. Uh, in all seriousness, fighting Mike Tyson is such an honor to step in the ring with one of the two most famous people to ever grace the sport of boxing. Not only will this be the biggest fight of my life, but I think this has the opportunity to change the history of boxing to be one of the biggest fights of the 21st century and to step in there with a legend means the world to me. It's the biggest moment of my career and a big challenge. Everyone I've told so far has said, don't get in the ring with Mike, he's too hard of a puncher. I mean, just look at this footage. That man is a beast, but I'm not taking him lightly. And July 20th, I hope to become the victor and to create history and knock out the legendary iron Mike Tyson. Paul, he keeps saying he wants to fight you. Do you want to fight him? That could be very interesting. It could be interesting. Mike Tyson says, let's do this. Are you down? 100%. Tyson versus that Jake might Paul be the, would be the best fight fucking ever. How would you feel if you stepped into the ring with Iron Mike? I would be in. Could you fuck him up? Oh, I'm so fucking easy. You versus Jake Paul, like this young YouTuber, takes on one of the greatest heavyweight champions that's ever lived. But I'm the best ever. That I don't know, bro. Look, sometimes I feel like Jake's fights are fake. And then at other times, I feel like they, they might be worth something, right? Who knows? I mean, you never really know what is going on behind closed doors. That's the truth. A fight would be gigantic. Good. Let's do it, Jakey. Jake Paul. He's taking on the baddest motherfucker that ever lived. If Jake Paul is on the other side of the ring, he's going to have a recognition. Yet. He's going to look over and go, oh my God, that's really Mike Tyson. Yet. I have one punch power. He has one punch power. Who wins? Well, with that being said, OBS seems like it's fucking up. Um, this was a cool run with OBS. Um, I got OBS down. I'll be using it more often. I still got to tweak some shit because I, I'm watching the live stream on my phone right now and it's, it's really delayed. So, whoever was watching this live stream from beginning to end, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, I might go live later on tonight. And if so, I'll definitely put a community post up. And thanks. Thank you, everybody, for being here. And uh, I'll see you next time. Peace out.